Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. And today is not a video I was expecting to make this week. I'm quite surprised at what's come out today. Um, Chelsea have sacked Thomas Tuchel, or as they say, part com party company with. Um, it's a strange one. It's, a, it's a, quite a strange one because I don't think anyone saw it coming this soon. I saw it coming this season. I didn't see it coming this soon. They're, what, six, seven games into the Prem season? Yes, they've... Uh, lost to Leeds, lost Southampton, which aren't good results away from home. They've looked very poor. Last night, they lost to uh, Dynamo Zagreb in the Champions League. They lost 1-0. And to be fair to them, they shouldn't have lost. They had a lot of chances. It's just Zagreb did that good one, one good counter with Orsic and they went through and scored. Now, I'll get on to the point why I saw it coming. But let's just talk about their performances and their results in recent the recent past, right? So obviously they lost to Liverpool at the end of the season in the FA Cup. Uh, pre-season, they, they had a mixed pre-season, if, if we're honest. But pre-season doesn't matter. As for fitness, whatever. Start of the season, they beat Everton one in away. It wasn't exactly the best performance. Everton had their chances. They just didn't have a strike to put the chances away. They then played Tottenham. Uh, however, I think they then played Leeds, and then lost three 0 They got absolutely humiliated. You know, they, they beat West Ham. Luckily. Uh, not so long ago, I think that might have been the last game, maybe. Yeah, that, that was the last game. They beat Leicester just about. Leicester almost came back towards the end. Uh, they lost to Southampton 2 1, I think it was. You know, they, they've just looked very on and off. And in that sense, performance wise, I kind of get it. But against the Greb, they should have won. We're seven games into a season, a team like Chelsea shouldn't be sacking the manager at this point. You know, they'll get through the group stage, Champions League. It's a kind of a time where they're transitioning. And I will move over to the statement in a second. But so there's, there's parts I want to pick apart. But let's talk about Thomas Tuchel's manager. His style's very s slow. A lot of Chelsea fans, when he first came in, were quite bored with his system. Or, but then he won the Champions League. So, like, oh, you know what? Let's just forget about it. T Thomas Tuchel is, is a hero. You know, let's move past it. Uh, and then they started to grow to like him because he brought them success, he brought them wins. Um, he got them to two finals. They didn't win either, but he got them to two finals off the back of getting to a Champions League final and winning that and winning the Super Cup and winning the Club World Cup as well. Todd Bowley, he wants his own way of doing things. As you can see by him being so key in the transfers that they're bringing in, and we'll get into that, we'll get into the rumours that they had swirling around, that the bids they put in, the players are signed as well. But I'm just going to move over to the screen quickly. Uh, as you can see, Chelsea put a statement four hours ago. Uh, Thomas Tuchel has left Chelsea. I was asleep during it. I had a decently long shift. Well, I had a decent shift last night. But I was knackered after it. So, yeah, I was asleep during the statement. But I've woke up to it. And it's, it's a bit mad to me. But when you read the statement, you can see why they've sacked him. Chelsea Football Club has today parted company with head coach Thomas Tuchel. On behalf of everyone at Chelsea FC, the club would like to place on record its gratitude to Thomas and its staff for all their efforts during the time of the club. Thomas will be highly rated, or Thomas will rightly have a place in Chelsea's history after winning the Champions League, Super Cup and Club World Cup. As the new ownership group, and this part is key, right? As the new ownership group reaches 100 days, since taking over the club, and as it continues its hard work to take the club forward, the new owners believe it is the right time to make its transition. That sentence right there sums it up, and that is why Thomas Tuchel has gone. For anyone confused about the decision, that is why. Businesses, especially American businesses and American owners, tend to be very business side driven they're not bothered as much about the club you see it in the glazers and i think you'll probably see it in todd bowley as well you see it in the Cronky family you see it in a lot of american owners they always talk about this 100 day plan now because in their head they're splitting the uh, year up into three parts right so they want a good start they want a, so a solid middle and they want a good end that's kind of how they want that's how, how they're looking at it so obviously you have the summer, it's about 60 days. So you the 100-day plan is to get a good start. They probably haven't done that, right? And in their head, they're like, okay, if you don't have a good start, that means it's not going to be a good middle and a good end, which isn't the case in football. And I think that's what 
Todd Bowley isn't quite he doesn't quite have that side like nailed and I think it is quite off the mark with that. Um and you see the new owners believe it is the right time to make this transition. That for me is what I've said since the start of the season when everyone's talking about who would be the first to get sacked, which I don't like that conversation, but I get what it said, because it, every year there's sackings in the Premier League, in every league. I don't think Thomas Tuchel was their manager, like their idea of who they wanted as manager, and I think they were looking for an opportunity to sack him, which they've now got. You see it in every regime, you know, the Burnley new owners, they only gave Deutsch a few months um, before they got rid of him. Villa? Villa did, did it with Bruce. Newcastle, that's the one I was thinking of. Did it with Bruce. Uh, a few months into... The, well, actually, no, probably a few weeks into their uh, regime. They got rid of Bruce, got in how, moved to the how they wanted, how they saw fit. Um, and I believe that's what they're doing here. Now, I don't think the signings in the summer were two core cool signings. Like, they're not the players that he wanted. Why would he want Kukurea when they've got Chilwell, when they had Alonso? Why would you want Kukurea for the amount of money they spent on him when they could spend that on a striker, which they now had to go for Aubameyang? I, I, I will move off this now and just go back to the straight up. The signings they got, let's talk about them. Fafana for the future is probably not quite there yet. Koulibaly, fair enough, that might be a Tuchel signing. I could probably see that. You know, he's, he's got kind of, Thiago Silva comes to the end of his career. Maybe, like, I think he has one year left in him, Silva, before he retires. Maybe two, we'll see. Um, Koulibaly is that natural, he's still a decent age where he's got the maturity, he's got the leadership qualities and he's a good defender. He's just took a bit of time to settle in at the minute. But you look at the bids they put in, Anthony Gordon for 60 million. Daft, absolutely daft money for Anthony Gordon who hasn't proved it yet in the Prem. He looks decent, he looks like he's a bit of a prospect. But he's, he hasn't proved he's that good yet. Um, other ones such as the Carney Chukameka from Villa, spending 20 million on him when he had a year left and he hasn't proved himself in the Prem. It's just whacking money to get a player in. And, it, and again, Tom Bowley seems to want to go down this you develop the young and planning for the future kind of thing. The Aubameyang signing is 100% a two-goal signing to keep him happy for what I believe is all the signings made for the future of Chelsea, not for Thomas Tuchel, which when you come into a football club, you should be looking at the short-term success, first of all. Not putting all the money into that, obviously. You want to develop the academy, develop uh, players for the future, but you need to get a short-term success. And they haven't put that into Tuchel. They've put that into the long-term success. You could tell Tuchel, in all of his interviews, he did something with Rio Ferdinand, I believe, as well, where he was quite like open about um, difference in uh, leadership and ownership, whatever. He he seems a bit, he just seemed a bit downbeat towards the end of his reign. He seemed like he didn't want to be there fully, um, but, but and he seemed like maybe there was a few issues behind the scenes, which we don't know. We can only judge it off the pitch, and that's what uh, the things with Rogers. Rogers is close with the owner. He has good, seems to have a good relationship. He seems to understand why they couldn't spend money, but still a bit frustrated. Whatever. Gerard has good. Uh, good connections with the CEO Christian Perzo. That's why he's not gone yet. Uh, and you know, like it just seems like there was something there not quite right between Tuchel and Bowley. Now, who takes over? That's a big, big key uh, element that they have to get right. There's been talks with Graham Potter. Brighton have allowed him to talk. Apparently, has a 16 million release clause. If I'm Graham Potter, I'm not going. I wouldn't even. I mean, obviously, you'd be interested, but I wouldn't go because you have something good at Brighton. Obviously, they're a club that is a bit limited as to what they can do because they don't have the financial capacity to go out and make these big signings that your Villas and your Newcastles are making around you, and even Crystal Palace. Brighton don't do that, and they seem to have a different approach to it. They seem to have a bit of a Brentford approach, a bit of a money ball kind of thing going on where they've sold your Kukurejas, your Ben Whites, your Basumas for decent money, like very decent money. Like Brentford sold uh, more pie and um, Watkins and Ben Rama and people like that. Tarkovsky, I think, as well. And Brighton kind of do that. So for Brighton to bring in a really big player, which they haven't done, would be quite weird for them. Like I think recent history, the 
Estupinan's probably the biggest name they've brought in. Um, really, like I can't think of it. There's probably other people, but I can't think of uh, many other examples. It'll be a bit of a kick in the teeth for Brighton if Potter does go. Again, I can understand why because he, he's a better manager than Brighton. He's he is probably a top eight manager. I'd I'd say he'd be more Leicester suited, but with Leicester where they on the table and Brighton, you're probably thinking, all right, why would he jump there? And I I agree. If I'm him, I'm giving Brighton this season, seeing what seeing what happens because. Potter would be my next England choice, and he, I think he's openly said that he, he that's something he'd like to do in the future, and I agree with that part. I don't think he's, I don't think it's the right thing for him to do now. I think Brighton is the right place for him to be now, and then maybe a step up in a year or two. I don't think, I don't think Chelsea's the club to be at. However, I don't think Potter will be the one they get. I think they'll go for Poch, and it. But he does kind of lie on Potch's uh, loyalties to Tottenham. I, don't, I just I just don't know who they go for out of the Potters, the the two uh, the Pochettinos. You know, oh, the Lavia thing as well. They tried to sign Lavia only like 50 days after he joined Southampton. They tried to pay out like 50 million, which is stupid. It's stupid. This, this guy has no clue. And he needs to appoint someone. Like, he had Petr Cech before. I think two said it in the Ferdinand interview that, Whereas he had Petr Cech before, he was now more involved in the transfers and he didn't want to be involved in transfers. If I'm Chelsea, I'm probably wanting to go to, for Potter, but I wouldn't, if I'm Potter, I don't want to go. So I think they'll probably end up with Pochettino, if I'm honest. And I can see that happening because Pochettino likes to develop youth players. He likes to uh, bring through a squad that is quite young and, you know, it probably doesn't set him up for instant success, but it gives in like two or three years, it'll give him something. Like he'll be tight in the Champions League final. I think it will end up being Pochettino, but Potter is their best choice. And with a 16 million at least cause he has in his contract, I think Potter's quite an easy grab if Potter wants the job and is keen on the job. But yeah, as I said, I think I think Pochettino would be the person they end up with. So let me know your thoughts in the comments on this strange departure, but something I did see coming maybe after the World Cup or just before the World Cup. But I think at this point in the season, it's quite it's very soon for a big club like Chelsea to depart with a manager. That's normally something you see lower down the table. A bit of desperation. Uh, it shouldn't be the case. So let me know in the comments who you think will be the successor to Thomas Tuchel, Big Tommy T, uh, Tommy Took, you know. Yeah, I think it's a strange one. But yeah, let me know your thoughts and your successes down below. If you have enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to reach 100 before the international break, which we only have about a week to do now. So make sure you subscribe and also like the video because it helps out massively. I'll see you next time. Until then, have a good time. Bye-bye. Shut up and sit down.